our seminary community is constantly changing. An academic year creates cycles of coming and going. Church seasons signal cycles of change. Families, church communities, interfaith friends are part of the community in different ways at different times. It is important and right that we recognize these times of passage, of endings and beginnings. Today, we share the time of farewell with David M. Greenhaw as he retires as president of Eden Theological Seminary. We do this in the spirit of worship, of celebration, and of great thanksgiving. Let us come to worship. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of the messenger who announces peace, who brings good news, who announces salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Break forth together into singing, you ruins of Jerusalem, for the Holy One has comforted the people and has redeemed Jerusalem. With thanksgiving for the messenger and the message, let us worship God together. Let us pray. Beloved keeper of the oikos, the household that is earth, our home, we give thanks for all the ways we have been given to tend and care for the earth and its people. We long to be good and faithful stewards of the days we each have been given, where we have been faithful in a little. We long to be faithful in much. Speak to us in this time together. Draw us into the larger work of your compassion, the broader purpose that gives meaning to our being. Show us what it means to continue living ever more deeply in ways that will whisper, well done, at the eve of the day. We ask these things with confidence because of Jesus, whom we seek to follow. Amen. Hear these words from Paul's letter to the church at Philippi the third chapter, beginning at the 12th verse with the superscription pressing toward the goal. Not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, Forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Let those of us then who are mature be of the same mind. And if you think differently about anything, this too God will reveal to you. Only let us hold fast to what we have attained. Here ends the reading. The second reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, the 15th chapter, in which Jesus conveys the surprising depth of God's steadfast love with a story. Then Jesus said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of the property that will belong to me. So he divided his property between them. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country where he squandered his property in dissolute living. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout that country and he began to be in need. 
So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. He would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hands have bread enough to spare? But here I am, dying of hunger. I will get up and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. So he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I, I have sinned against heaven, and before you I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his slaves, Quickly, bring a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now, the elder son was in the field. And when he came and approached the house, he heard music and dancing. He called one of the slaves and asked what was going on. He replied, your brother has come and your father has killed the fatted calf because he has got him back safe and sound. Then he became angry and refused to go in. His father came out and began to plead with him, but he answered his father, listen, for all these years, I have been working like a slave for you and I have never disobeyed your command. Yet you have never even given me a young goat so that I might celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came back, who has devoured your property with prostitutes, you killed the fatted calf for him. Then the father said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that is mine is yours. But we had to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours, this brother of yours was dead and has come to life. He was lost and has been found. Holy wisdom, holy word. Hi, my name's Andrew Greenhaw, and I'm David Greenhaw's youngest son. We moved to Eden the summer before I began the eighth grade. I'd been aware that my dad had been applying for the job for some time, that our being there in the president's residence was the culmination of some effort on his part, but I didn't have a clue really as to how much. I remember standing on the deck shortly after we arrived, looking out at the field with the one newly planted sapling in it, and him telling me that he'd first come to Eden when he was my age. He came with his confirmation class from Colonial Congregational Church in Prairie Village, Kansas, to visit the seminary. And that was when he first thought about coming there. After college, he did. He earned his MDiv at Eden, and then he returned as director of admissions as he was finishing his dissertation. And then he came back once more 
or as president that summer before I started eighth grade. Well, that was almost 23 years ago now, and if you stand on the deck and look out at that field today, the little sapling now blocks your view because it's a darn near 100-foot-tall tree today. David Greenhaw has been a part of Eden Theological Seminary for a long time. Years later, as I was considering seminary myself and talking over schools that I might attend, my dad made a comment about some seminary not being particularly concerned about the church, that it wasn't like Eden, which was attached to the church. I didn't really know what he meant at the time. After becoming a pastor myself, I have a better idea now. My dad has been the president of Eden for two decades now, but to him, it's never really been about him being the president, nor just about the seminary itself. Because Eden Theological Seminary doesn't exist just to serve itself, or to serve the academy, or its faculty, or even its students. Eden Theological Seminary exists to serve the Church of Jesus Christ. And my dad has tried his whole life to be of service to the Church of Jesus Christ. He's dedicated his time, his talents, his energy, his life to Eden Seminary because that was how he could best serve the Church. I'm remarkably proud of so many things that he did during his time here. The racial diversity on campus and the international programs among them. But mostly I'm proud that he tried his best in everything he did to be of service to the church. Thank you for your faithful service, Dad. We will try our best to follow your example and to help Eden to continue its tradition of service to the church. Hello, friends. My name is John Dorhauer, and I currently serve as the general minister and president of the United Church of Christ. I bring you greetings from my home office in Cleveland, Ohio, where I have been working from home under quarantine and in a shelter-in-place environment since the first week of March. Because of that, much of the work of the wider church, including this celebration of the life and ministry of David Greenhaw, is being done in a very different environment than we are used to. And it is with some regret and some grief and some sense of loss that I communicate to you by way of of a recorded video rather than in person where we can all stand and celebrate the ministry and life of this remarkable leader. I have a personal history with David uh, that goes back to my uh, early roots in the United Church of Christ. Now, my roots don't extend all the way back into my childhood. I was born and raised Roman Catholic in the city of St. Louis, spent eight years in a Catholic seminary, uh, before I made a decision to pursue my pathway in faith on a completely different journey. I actually had been spending a couple of years worth of working with a painting contractor after I joined the Lutheran Church and married my wife, who was raised Lutheran, um, when I felt a call back to the ministry. This was in the spring of 1985, and looking for a place where I might locate my ministry on this new faith journey. I walked onto the campus of Eden Seminary. It was late in the afternoon. I had been working all day. I had paint splattered all over me. I was in my overalls and sweaty and smelly. And I knocked on the door of the Dean of Admissions, having no idea where I was or who this was, and met for the first time David Greenall. He would sit with me for 90 minutes he would ask me questions about my faith journey, learned that I had spent eight years in a Catholic seminary, 
Uh, it's been a couple of years out before I felt a call back to ministry and to pursue that on a different pathway. Talked to me at some length about his doctoral thesis, which he was just beginning to work on and write at that time. Um, and I'll never forget in that conversation, he looked at me with all seriousness and said, John, if you come here, you're going to have to learn to question everything. That statement by David Greenhaw gave me my first impression of what it meant to be a part of the United Church of Christ. I'm grateful to him for that, for accepting me onto this journey, for being the welcoming angel that not only received me, but gave me a sense of new purpose and pathway and direction, helping me to realize that I would now become a part of a faith tradition that required the intellect and the, the creativity of every member of the faith to become active agents in the transformation of the world and the faith in our generation. Here's what I most appreciate about David and my relationship with him has blossomed through the years. But here's what I most appreciate about David. David has at one and the same time an awareness of the deep roots in history of the United Church of Christ, especially through its E&R traditions. And attached to that knowledge and awareness in history is a deep love and appreciation for the church as it's come to us through the roots and the traditions. And in meetings through the years that I've had with him, it has been David's reasoned voice that reminded us as we were beginning to walk new pathways of what the traditions required of us. Not as a way of saying, don't take this next step, but make sure that you take it with a full, aware, full awareness of what it means to be a part of this family of faith and be willing to defend to future generations this step that you have taken as consistent with the roots in the history. But along with that, along with that understanding of the deep roots in history comes also um, a creative mind willing to shape the hearts and minds of those who will follow and saying to them, as he said to me, you come here, you question everything. That ability to have a deep appreciation, awareness, and understanding of the roots while cultivating at the same time the leaders who would interrogate and question the roots and take the church in new directions, I think is what makes David Greenhaw the remarkable leader that he is. I wish I had more time to talk about my unfolding relationship with this gifted, remarkable leader. I want to say on behalf of an entire denomination, we are so grateful to you, David, for all that you have given in your life and in service to the church. You have shaped the hearts and minds of many through the years who are now leaders within this denomination, myself included. You have been both a welcoming presence and a challenging voice along the way, both accepting us on the journey and uh, asking us and challenging us not to accept who we are on the journey now, but to be constantly open to what the Spirit is moving and calling us to be. As you come to the end of your ministry and after 23 years of serving as the president of Eden Seminary, my alma mater, I hope that you are as proud of the work that you have committed to as we are. And again, on behalf of a grateful denom denomination, please receive our gratitude for all that you have done. You have been a mentor to me. You have been a teacher to me. You have been a colleague to me. You have been a friend to me. And for all of it, I am grateful. David Greenhall, thank you. Hi, my name is the Reverend Dr. Carla Cooper, and I'm a 2004 graduate of Eden Theological Seminary, and I currently serve on its board of trustees. Proverbs 22 and 1 suggests, a good name is to be chosen over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver or gold. There is something about a name. As a matter of fact, there is a Hebrew word which means beloved or uncle, and it is pronounced dut, which is where the name David has its etymology. Not surprising that our president emeritus, Dr. David Greenhall, is beloved by so many and has left a legacy at 
at Eden Theological Seminary, similar to the Old Testament personality of David, whose reputation in salvation history is that of being a man after God's own heart. Dr. David Greenhall's reputation will forever be etched in Eden's history. And although faced with the Goliaths of relevancy that confronts theological education, President David Greenhall, using both sanctified imagination and scholarly integrity, kept Eden Seminary on the progressive cutting edge, while at the same time encouraging a worldview that challenged faculty, staff, and students to go therefore into all the world to learn in cultural contexts that would stretch and remind us of our call to be global witnesses through God's amazing grace, connected as kindred souls, whether in Kenya or India, or Cuba, or Ghana, or Ferguson. So as a student, I was blessed to sit at the feet of one of the great prophetic preachers. As a board member, I bear witness to his integrity and his vision. And as a citizen of the world, I have watched Dr. David Greenhall live the God so loved the world that he embraced all. Thank you, Dr. David Greenhall, for being the gift that keeps on giving. Beloved David Greenhall, well done, good and faithful servant leader. May God bless you in this next phase of your journey of faith as you have been a blessing to so many.
Hello, my name is Sue Steepleton. I'm the immediate past chair of the Board of Trustees of Eden Theological Seminary. Eden throughout its history has had exemplary, extraordinary leadership. And we are gathered virtually today to celebrate David Greenhaw, the most recent occupant of this exemplary leadership, as he and his wife, Lee, who has also served Eden Seminary beautifully as they move into a well-earned retirement. During his 23-year tenure, Dr. Greenhaw has been a distinguished scholar, a challenging and nurturing teacher, an inspiring and motivating preacher all around the world. He has been one of the most significant voices in the country for progressive Christianity. And throughout it all, and most importantly today, he has been the administrator, the manager, the leader, the custodian, of this critically important seminary. It has been the custom at Eden when we are saying goodbye to a president to commemorate the service with the commissioning of a portrait. We, the trust, current trustees are pleased and honored to continue that tradition. We commissioned artist Edward Martinez to develop a likeness of David that would honor his service, and we believe he has done that. We are proud to unveil this portrait at this time. Lee, would you help me? Let me go back here. Yeah, good. My. <laughs> wow. wow. I, should, I should take up that pose. <laughs> Oh, you look goodness. serene. Life size. Yeah. Oh, marvelous. Thank you. Yeah. This is wonderful. Thank you. David, your influence as a leader has been felt well beyond the con confines of Eden Seminary. And there are others who wanted to note your role and recognize it as you move into retirement. There are three proclamations, which will be physically handed over to you when we can gather together in person. They're full of whereases and therefores, and I will not read all of them. They are long, but I will read a few of them and summarize some salient points from each one. First, whereas Dr. Greenhaw concludes his service, having been a noted preacher, scholar and lecturer who has presented widely in Asia, Africa, South America, and Europe, and whose influence has been profound, including outreach to and collaborations with those of all major faiths of the world. And whereas under Dr. Greenhaw's leadership came the establishment through a generous gift from Ambassador George and Dr. Carol Walker of the Walker Leadership Institute, working as the intersection of faith and business. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the Missouri Senate, extend our most sincere congratulations to Dr. Greenhaw on this illustrious occasion, offered by Senator Scott Sifton and signed by David Schatz, President Pro Tem of the Missouri Senate. And second, Whereas Dr. Greenhaw has been a proud supporter of the Jewish Community Relations Council, Interfaith Partnership, Council of Foreign Relations, Planned Parenthood, and the Luce, Luce Foundation, to name only a few. And whereas Dr. Greenhaw has been blessed with the love and support of his wonderful family, which includes his devoted wife, Lee Greenhaw, his two sons, Andrew and Robert, and his three grandchildren, Ruth, Samuel, and Miles. Mm -hmm. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Missouri House of Representatives humbly join in expressing our utmost appreciation to Dr. Greenhaw for his three decades of unparalleled service to Eden Theological Seminary and to the Christian mission. 
offered by Representative Sarah Unsicker and certified by Elijah Har, Speaker of the Missouri House of Representatives. And finally, whereas David Greenhaw has played an essential role in the city of Webster Groves since 1997 in his professional position as the president of Eden Seminary and in his contributions to furthering the quality of life in this city. And whereas David Greenhaw understands the importance of connecting the seminary to the broader community by allowing and encouraging the use of Eden's facilities and green space for ball field and gathering uses and providing a setting for the annual Webster Groves Art Fair, Webster Art Fair, as well as an office for the organization. Therefore, I, Jerry Welsh, mayor of the city of Webster Groves, on behalf of the entire city council, wish to honor David Greenhaw on his retirement and do hereby proclaim Tuesday, June 30th, 2020, as David Greenhaw Day in the city of Webster Groves. <laughs> Cool. <laughs> I'd like to at this time to make some comments of your own. Well, thank you. Um, my goodness. Um, whew. <laughs> at first, uh, we should never start with my son speaking. I, I had uh, dry tears. Uh, it was lovely. Um, in December of 1997, uh, we had an uh, inauguration service and I gave an inaugural address at Hope United Church of Christ. And in that address, I talked about the value of institutions. And, um, and I, I shared that, uh, that I've been like many people, uh, that I found institutions maybe stultifying, stultifying and stuffy. And in fact, when we use the word, you've been institutionalized, what we usually mean is this horrible thing to be institutionalized. But as I thought about it and spoke about it then, uh, to be institutionalized in that negative sense is to be mono-institutionalized, to be in only one institution, to be isolated. So if you were imprisoned in one institution or if you were in an asylum of some sort, you're institutionalized and you're cut off from the multitude of institutions there are. I pledged then and have tried to honor ever since to help Eden be a strong institution and an institution related to other institutions, to not be mono-institutionalized, but to be connected and related in so many ways that we already were connected, but to work at strengthening those ties with congregations, an extraordinary institution, with the the families of so many people. One of the great honors I've had is to get to know many, many, many people and to get to know them and their families and to show up at places where, they, uh, where they're hurting, where they're struggling. In hospital rooms and funerals, I've gone to a lot of funerals. And I go to those because it's part of connecting us to the families and congregations that relate to us. But more than that, we're connected to a whole network of denominations, to the United Church of Christ, and to an ecumenical community that is quite broad, and an interfaith community to connect with Jewish temples and synagogues and with mosques and Buddhist temples and to connect in all these interfaith ways. I've been blessed to be able to do that. And it is, as I imagine, the enriching that we've had by being involved with multiple institutions. But even more, we've, I think, and I've been excited by this, uh, proud of it actually, the connections that we've been able to make with churches and countries around the world to work with churches, partner churches, and have real partnerships, friendships, uh, care about each other. I'll never forget the day 9-11 uh, when we received greetings from churches literally around the world, friends reaching out to us to know how we were, whether we were all right. It was so clear that we were not 
mono-institutionalized. We were woven into a web of so many folks. And it is because of that, I think, because we're not alone, because we don't belong to ourselves, that this little institution, Eden Seminary, in the middle of a small Midwestern state, in a middle-sized city, in a suburb of a middle-sized city, Eden Seminary has had an influence extraordinarily disproportionate to its size. We've developed ways to connect and make a difference in the world, to have a voice that is able to reverberate. And it's been my extraordinary privilege to be in a position to help strengthen the ties that bind these amazing ways to help us. Several of you have heard me say that I was at the city council uh, a few years back and the council was worried about the seminary's finances and whether we would still be here. And they were very anxious and they said, uh, Dr. Greenhaw, we've heard that the seminary is having financial trouble. Is that true? And I looked at them and I said, absolutely it's true. Since 1850, we've had financial troubles. We've always tried to get by and do more than we could possibly do. And yet we've been able to do it. And sometimes we skate on thin ice and we lean too far, but we have stretched and reached and made a difference. And we have been able to do it because we are so connected with so many people. I can't begin to tell you how grateful I am for the cloud of witnesses, donors, like the donor who sent us a dollar and 65 cents and said, I'd give you so much more if I had it, but this is the last in my checkbook. To, of course, the donors who've given their full estates and left them to us. To people who have stretched and come forward, have leaned in at hard and important times. I'm grateful to all of those folks and to the teachers who've been teaching so long. As I cleaned out the files, I ran across wonderful files of teachers who have taught at Eden Seminary, those who teach now and those in the past. I found a letter sent to Robert Fouth, who was a predecessor of mine, the president from 1962 to 1982. It was on the occasion of the funeral for Samuel D. Press. It was a letter written by Richard Niebuhr, Ryan, H. Richard Niebuhr. And he wrote and he said, Dr. Press, second only to my father, is the most important theological influence in my life. I think about the way Eden has been able to do that, generation after generation, to be a strong theological influence, to help people think about God, to take God seriously, but never to take themselves too seriously, never to believe that they know all the answers, but to understand that they're they're seeking, as John said, asking questions continually. It has been an honor and a privilege to serve as I have. When I introduce myself, I have for 23 years said it this way. My name is David Greenhaw. I'm an ordained minister of the United Church of Christ, currently serving as the president of Eden Seminary. In two more days, I'll say, I'm an ordained minister of the United Church of Christ. I'll stop serving Eden in its capacity as president. It's been a great, great experience for me. I've enjoyed it immensely. It's worn me out. It's frustrated me. It's thrilled me. And it's been a joy. Of course, you all know what always chokes me up, and that is that uh, 
the most important partner for me in this has been my wife, Lee. She, I don't know if she loves seminaries. She may not even like theological education in the abstract, but she loves Eden Theological Seminary. And her love for the seminary has helped me do the work that I've needed to do over these years. And so I want to say to you how grateful I am to her and just turn the camera a little and say, thanks, Lee. <laughs> Thank you all for this opportunity to serve. In July 1997, David M. Greenhaw began serving at Eden Theological Seminary as president. He previously has served at Lancaster Theological Seminary, Vanderbilt University, Divinity School, and Eden Seminary. This is my part. <laughs> I thank Eden Theological Seminary, its board of trustees, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and a wider community for the love, kindness, and support shown me these last 23 years. I ask forgiveness for the mistakes I have made and great, am grateful for the ways my leadership has been accepted. As I leave, I carry with me all that I have learned here. We receive your thankfulness, offer forgiveness, and accept that you now leave to minister elsewhere. We express our gratitude for your time among us. We ask your forgiveness for our mistakes. Your influence on our faith and faithfulness will not leave us at your departure. I forgive you and accept your gratitude, trusting that our time together and our parting are pleasing to God. Do you, the Eden mm -hmm. community, release David M. Greenhaw from the duties of president? We do. We do. God. With the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for his ministry as it unfolds in new ways? We do, we do. With the help of the God. Help of God. God. Do you, David, release Eden Theological Seminary from turning to you and depending on you? I do, with the help of God. Do you offer your encouragement for the continued ministry here and on the relationship with another one who will come to serve? I do, with the help of God. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. God, whose everlasting love for all is trustworthy, help each of us to trust the future which rests in your care. The time we were together in your name saw our laughter and our tears, our hopes and disappointments. Guide us as we hold these cherished memories but move in new directions until that time to come when we are completely one with you and with each other. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
Go now, surrounded by our love and led by the promises of God, the presence of Jesus Christ, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you.